this map is starting to look like something that I want to be playing more and more. In fact, I've played this map, I think, every single day for the past week or so, and I was playing it without any trees or bushes whatsoever. But last night, Dice LA released their first update for the community map project, and as you can see in the background, the trees that we all wanted are now in the map. But that's not the only thing that has changed here. The developers have done some tweaking to the flag locations and they've added some new assets as well. The footage in the background is almost entirely tank gameplay, I think. And I jumped into the tank with Shadow6, who was the guy who helped to set up those night maps that I showcased about five or six months ago on my channel. Those were the unofficial ones before Dice LA ended up making it something that they wanted to do in the future. So yeah, I was in a tank with him and uh, we pretty much dominated the server for about 10 or 15 minutes. And I wanted to showcase that gameplay because it does show how difficult it can be to play in a tank on this map, but it can also show you how easy it can be to play as infantry with all that cover in there. So kind of gives a nice balance really. But first up though, let's talk about that cover that's been added in. Right now, the cover itself only consists of trees and bushes, which is not particularly solid and nothing like that has been added yet. So sort of rocks and rubble that we see in plenty of other BF4 maps hasn't quite made it in just yet. But with the introduction of that extra foliage, well, in comparison to the last time I played on this map, my God, does it make a difference. If you do remember back to my first video that I did on this map, most of the area that was playable was just simply empty. Lines of sight stretched way beyond the intended ranges, and you could see in some places across hundreds of meters of the map surface. This was intended though, because Dice LA were going for scale feedback. They wanted people to tell them and let them know if they felt the size of the map and the spacing of the flags worked well or not. And on that point actually, this is one of the changes that they've made in this update. Some people noticed that during the first test, a lot of the flags didn't necessarily feel like they were spaced correctly, which meant that players needed to run different distances between flags that were actually next to each other on the map. So let's say, for example, A and B were 200 meters apart, but D and E were only 45 meters apart. That's just an example, but that's what I'm trying to say. So that spacing between all those flags is now much more equivalent across the whole map. So you shouldn't have to run much further between two flags that are next to each other all the way around the map, which is a nice gameplay change to make because it means that you're not having to run everywhere. It's not taking you hundreds and hundreds of hours to get to the next objective. And overall, it keeps gameplay flowing around the map. One other change that I really appreciated as well was the introduction of transport choppers which added another great way to get from point to point on the map. And as the tree and bush cover is now so thick on the ground, getting yourself above the battle in that chopper is like a breath of fresh air. And it's really quick for you to get from one point to the next. You don't have to run in between all the bushes making sure you're checking out for enemies. No, you can just make a beeline for the objective that you want to get for. Now, I'm not saying that there is too much going on on the ground because I really like the way that they've made it feel like a jungle. You're sort of having to push your way through all of this foliage to get to where you want to go. But it's important that people can get across the other side of the map very quickly and they can start maybe a flanking route, they can start taking one of the objectives that's across the other side of the map, draw the enemy away and then it gives more space for your team to push back across the map a little bit. And what I found really nice above all else with the introduction of these transport choppers is it now sounds more like a battlefield map with the inclusion of those mini guns spraying bullets onto the ground and the rotor blades sort of just pounding a bit of bass into the jungle. You can hear it through your headphones. The atmosphere of the map has benefited massively because of these helicopters because what it was like before, it was sometimes very, very quiet. I mean, you couldn't even hear any ambient noise because it hadn't been added at that point and do you know what? I can't even remember if any ambient noise has been added, but the fact that there's a helicopter in there now mixed with the occasional sound of a tank firing its main cannon, it's starting to feel much more like I would expect a Battlefield map to feel like. Some other points worth noting in this update, the first one is the further work done to the medical facility flag, which before this update didn't have any buildings inside the concrete walls at all. 
It was like a blank canvas, essentially. And the buildings that you might remember from Paracel Storm, the ones on the main island, the ones that can be fully, fully destroyed, those have been introduced, which gives the flag a much nicer look and feel now. It turns from dense jungle, you go through those concrete walls, into a nice close quarters gunfight area. With those fully destructible buildings, it's a really nice area to do battle in. And finally, both the Russian and the American deployments have been moved closer to the centre of the map. I didn't feel that this made a huge amount of difference because I wasn't really concentrating on my own deployment. I always had a flag that I could use to spawn on if I wanted to. But to be honest, there's still a straight line from the Russian spawn to the decapture point, which for me doesn't really feel like a great move because if the US team had steamrolled the server and spawn capped the Russians, then they'd have a line of sight straight into the Russian base. And we all know that wouldn't be very fun to take part in. But overall, this is a great little update to the community map project and it's done exactly what I expected it to do. It added trees and bushes, it changed the flag layout and added a few more modes of transport in there as well. They were all really good moves. Next, I'd like to see Dysole maybe try some more different moves with the vehicles that we've got, maybe add some ATVs in there and give soldiers a little bit more option about moving around the map and sort of moving a little bit faster as well and maybe switch up the heavy vehicles that we've got. I'd like to see maybe a lav given to each of the factions in their base that they can drive out onto the map and then let the sea flag become the spawn for an MBT tank, giving the players a reward for capturing that point. I think that could be really cool. But thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll make sure to keep you updated on the jungle map here as often as I can when those changes are made. And if you could leave me a like, that'd be absolutely fantastic. And don't forget to hit up g2a.com slash r slash westy for great deals on the latest games. The link's in the description. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.